My name is Kevin Furman. I'm a percussionist and I'm here to talk about rolls. And we are on step eight of 10 steps to unbelievable rolls. I'm glad you checked it out. I hope you've gone through one through seven of these, uh, in these videos here on YouTube. If you haven't, I really recommend you do because this will be, really won't make much difference for you if you just jump to here and, oh, okay, whatever. He's just talking about whatever he's talking about. If you go through all the steps, you will get to a point where your control will start to maximize and you will actually begin to roll and it'll be easy and easy to do without tension is really the point. So I'm trying to get people to roll without tension, have maximum range of control and, and expression. So that's really the, the goal of this whole thing. So step eight. All right. Now we've been talking about doing the right, right, left, left, or the double stroke roll, open roll, double bounce roll. Uh, for the last few steps and this one is where it starts to be where you're actually working on rolling where the speed is now becoming more of a factor okay now how here's how it works step eight is built on step seven step seven we talked about getting your metronome out going at a certain tempo and making sure the timing of your hands is exactly even right so you're hearing a rhythm so say thinking eighth notes or you can think 16th notes if you'd like, whatever. The rhythm doesn't matter that much right now, it's just that they're even. So you hear a very steady da 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 or da 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 whatever, right? So the idea is you need to you need to be able to control an open roll at or a double stroke roll at any tempo. That's really the ideal situation. So one of the most common ways to practice, and this comes from way back when, over a hundred years ago, practicing style which is you do the slow, fast, slow of the open roll. Meaning, you play right, right, left, left, as slow as you can bouncing, gradually, gradually is the main word, gradually speed up to go as fast as you can handle, okay, and we'll talk about that as you do it, and then you gradually, that's another very important word, <laughs> gradually slow back down to the slowest that you can go. Now this slow, fast, slow approach has been around forever, and it really does work a range of skill level and a range of tempos which is extremely important because you need to be able to play a role at any tempo so if you only practice at one or five tempos going to any others gets more awkward right so if you practice this range and you do it the smooth way of slow fast slow it tends to give you more speed and it tends to give you a lot more control and i'll talk about that as i go through this process so step eight really is all about slow fast slow and you just practice it um, different cycles of slow fast slow. So here's how it works. So it'd be something like this. So I'm just going to do it and then I'll, I'll talk you through it as we go. So no, okay, so kind of like a train, right? Train starting up. So very even. I'm not trying to get fast as soon as I can to impress everyone. I'm trying to learn how to control at different tempos. Okay, so as it gets quicker, what you'll notice is your fingers, your back three fingers will move less. You really want to listen to make sure that things are even. Okay, and we'll I'm going to talk about that after I do this example here. So you go fast, right? Get it going. As fast as you can do it. Now you may not be able to go this quick, but that's okay. You just go as fast as you can go. Notice I'm playing still strong. I'm not going quiet as I go faster. Again, one more thing I want to talk about. And then you gradually, gradually slow it down. Most people don't do that correctly and they lose out on the control factor of this whole thing. When you, when you just stop, if you go slow to fast and you're like, okay, I'm done, you lose out on the control factor of, of being able to control this even more. It's, it more than doubles your control amount when you work on the gradually slowing down. The front part, the slow to fast part, is really about speed, about learning how to go faster. The, the fast to slow part, the second part of that is about controlling the sticks to a higher level. So if you just do one or the other, yeah, you're gonna get speed, but you won't have control. If you just go fast to slow, you'd have control, not as much speed, I guess, but most people don't do that. Most people are way overly concerned about speed and not so much about control. So uh, you gotta do both in that cycle. Okay, so, um, you want to make sure things are even, right? So make sure your right hand isn't a lot higher than your left. So they're the same speed, but as you can see in here, that, 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 right? You don't want that. Or vice versa. Say your left hand's the heavy one, right? It's the strong one, whatever, right? So make them even. One thing to watch is if they're both going up to the same exact height. So me, I'm watching my sticks. I'm sort of looking looking up in this frame up here and I'm just seeing if both sticks are coming up to the same height. Now as things go faster, 
Most people, because of their technique, if you squeeze, you have to go lower to make it go faster. In this technique, you don't. You can keep it high and go fast. And it's not tense. It's not like a tension thing. It's a timing thing that you're working on. So in this slow, fast thing, slow, fast, slow idea, you're really working on the timing of what, how much tension or not tension, how much pressure do I exert here with these back three fingers um, when it's going quick so that the timing is right. So what you're working on that slow, fast, slow thing is really how do I do that? So one thing to do is you start slow. Okay. So again, timing, evenness. And as it goes faster, let's say this is your fastest speed right here. Other than that, it starts to blow up. You start to get kind of that kind of sound. Okay, well then that's too fast for you, right? So what you gotta do is just keep it controlled as fast as you can go. Stay there for a couple of seconds, maybe four seconds or so, right? And then slow it back down. So you wanna kind of push that edge, right on the edge of losing it. You wanna kind of stay close to that edge as long as you can, four or five seconds seems to be really good. And then you slow it back down for the control again. Then you go back up. So this cycle of slow to fast to slow, you wanna do four or five times a day. Okay, and that should take you about a minute if you're doing it right. So about a minute a day, maybe two minutes, you know, do it more if you wanna do more. Um, the more you do it, the, the more speed and control you will gain. So you can't do it enough. There's, you could keep doing this the rest of your life and still get stuff out of it. But uh, right now, I'd say four or five cycles a day should take you a minute to two minutes each day, and then you'll gain some more speed and control. Now, you'll want to keep doing that for throughout, you know, when you practice. So that's something you don't just do for this week. You do it for here on, and then realize that what you're gaining is more speed. So every time you do it, you're trying, you're, you're gaining more muscle control and more speed factor and control factor as you do it. So one week is just to learn how the rest of your life is to learn how to master it. So that's the idea with it. Okay. So, um, also one thing to consider, um, is the speed factor, right? You'll start to get to a point where it's pretty quick, right? Now, you'll start to feel yourself maybe want to squeeze again because it's going so fast. You're not, your muscles aren't quite ready for it. You do want to push yourself, but make sure that it's not beyond the, the control factor, meaning you don't revert to squeezing at, at your fulcrum point, that you leave, leave all your fingers on and you really are still using the correct technique for bouncing. That's crucial. It's crucial that you do that at this point because we're trying to push speed now. And if you're squeezing at all, it's just going to accentuate the, the squeezing part. And you don't want that. You want to accentuate the control factor of these back of your fingers. So going really, really, really fast. Let's say here's, you know, it's pretty fast. It's not crazy fast, but it's fast. Okay, it, gets, it can be really taxing if you're squeezing at all. And you'll start to get blisters on your hand if you do it wrong. Um, I know because I've seen people do it. Now, I personally have never gotten blisters from playing drumsticks, drum set, snare drum. That's not something I've gotten blisters from ever because technique has always been a very, very strong part of my development because I knew I needed to develop that to be good. So you don't have to play with paint. You don't have to play with blisters and you can play as fast and as loud as you want. Okay. So that's, that's the, what you gain out of doing it this way. So there you go. There's step eight. Slow, fast, slow cycle. Make sure you gradually go between slow and then back you know, too fast and then back to slow. Gradual is the key word. If you, if you move through that cycle too quickly, you lose part of the, the strength building and the muscle building part and the control factor. So take your time with it. Make sure at the top end, at the fast end, stay there for four or five seconds and then slow it back down and go slow. And do that cycle four or five times a day. Should again, take you about a minute, two minutes in your warm-up routine, not much out of any routine that's of any consequence. So do it and you'll you'll love the result. Thanks a lot for checking out step eight. Two more left, so I'll see you at step nine. Take care.